The tradition of Holi goes like this. It is actually in our Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is a Mahapurana, which was written by Bhagavan Vedavyasa. And this, it's called Mahapurana because it is extensive. And it's based on the life of Bhagavan Krishna and all the avatars of Lord Vishnu. And this Bhagavatam has about 18,000 verses. So you can imagine just reading this, what it's like. And very famous in our tradition is called Bhagavat Saptaha. When somebody goes through the entire Bhagavatam in seven days. And it is said when somebody listens to a Bhagavat Sapta, they become highly purified because it's all about the story and the glory of God. So we, we do have, you know, we're very fortunate that uh, in our mission, we do have our Swamis who do the Bhagavat Sapta and they're just a delight to listen to. This Bhagavatam has cantos, which are like chapters. And this Prahlad story comes in the seventh canto of Bhagavatam. And it starts actually like this. This is a, a conversation between Shuka and Parikshit. Shuka is the son of Vedavyasa. So Vedavyasa is the one who wrote this Purana. Shuka is his son. And Parikshit is the grandson of Arjuna, Abhimanyu's son. So those of you who have studied Mahabharata, have been part of the Mahabharata sessions, then you can trace all of this together. And so they are having a conversation. And in that conversation that they're having, they're talking about Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira has some kind of doubt that he asks Naraji for advice. And Yudhishthira's doubt is when he performed this huge, huge sacrifice to become king, there was this person named Shishupala who was defeated in that sacrifice. And when this Shishupala was defeated by Krishna Bhagavan, he entered into Krishna. So the Shishupala was a demon, you know, and he kept on insulting Krishna, insulting Krishna, insulting Krishna. And so Sh Krishna finally, after the hundredth insult, he defeats Shishupala. And this Shishupala enters into Lord Krishna. Yudhishthira has this doubt as to why a demon enters into God, right? So we know somebody who's good, somebody who's noble comes to God. But somebody who is a demon, how is it that they became united with God? And so Narada tells him the story of Shishupala. Shishupala and this other demon, Dantavakra, were actually Jay and Vijay. These two guards of Lord Vishnu were called Jay and Vijay. And they were like the gatekeepers of Lord Vishnu. And what happened one day is these Sanat Kumaras, these four Rishis, wanted to come and see Lord Vishnu. But Jay and Vijay said, you cannot come. You cannot see Lord Vishnu. You're not able to see him. And so uh, Sanat Kumaras, they got really upset and they cursed Jay and Vijay that they would be born three lifetimes as Rakshasas. And then only they would be united with Bhagavan. And so the first uh, time as a Rakshasa, this Jay and Vijay comes says Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. The second time Jay and Vijay come as Ravana and Kumbhakarana. The third time they come as Shishupala and Dantavakra. So you see this whole thing where it starts. It's so, so I'm just saying this. I could go right into the story of Prahlad, but I'm just seeing this so you can see how beautiful our tradition is. So, you know, you have Shuka and Parikshit, they're talking. And then in their conversation, they talk about Yudhishthira and Narada. And Yudhishthira's question is about Shishupala. And Narada tells him the whole history. This, this is what happened. So now we're going to see the life of Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. That's the first avatar as Rakshasas of Jay and Vijay. 
what happened there? So what happens is Hiranyaksha is the brother of Hiranyakashipu. He is killed by the Varaha avatar of Narayana. And so their whole family is mourning. They're all mourning and mourning the death of this Hiranyaksha. Meanwhile, Hiranyakashipu is there and he's listening to all of them mourn. And he tells them, now he's a Rakshasa, he's a demon. He tells them there's no point in grieving. Don't you know that the body is not eternal? The body, it dies. And therefore, Hiranyaksha's body has left. But the Atman is that which is eternal. And so Hiranyakashipu gives them all of this jnana, all of this knowledge, and he says, no need to grieve. If grieving were really something that could make a difference to the life of Hiranyaksha, then you go on grieving. But that grieving will not make a difference. So therefore, don't grieve anymore. Start to live your life and learn to accept what happens because the body is temporary and it is going to die. So Hiranyakashipu gives this whole sermon. And, but you know how Rakshasas can be. They know the truth. It's not like they don't know. They know it, but they don't practice it. So meanwhile, he says, and he thinks to himself, that I want to do tapas. I want to do extreme austerity so that I can live forever. <laughs> now he knows the body can live forever, but he wants to do tapas so he can live forever. And so it is said that he goes and does extreme tapas, that no other devata could even match his tapas. When the rakshasas do tapas, ironically, they do a lot of tapas. You know, these it takes it takes discipline to be evil. It takes discipline to be good, but it also takes discipline to be evil. And in Hiranyakashipu, it was that he stood in his tippy toes with his arms raised, and he stood like that for a very long time. And the whole world was heating because of his tapas. It was getting burnt because this tapas, this austerity when we perform, it produces such tremendous energy that whenever we're around those people who do a lot of tapas, we feel it. So much so in our culture today, when we visit holy pilgrimage sites where people have done tapas, you can feel their austerity in those places. Your mind just goes silent and still. So the whole world was burning by his tapas. So the Devata said, Brahmaji, you better go to this Hiranyakashipu. His tapasya is becoming way too strong. So Brahmaji said, okay, I will go and I will grant him whatever boon he wants. And so there were ants even crawling over Hiranyakashipu's body, but he didn't even care. And Brahmaji came to visit him and said, oh my God, he's doing so much tapas. And he pours water on the body of Hiranyakashipu so that all the ants, they shy away. And he pours that water and he tells Hiranyakashipu, now please stop your tapas. You're burning the whole world. What is it that you want? And he says, I want to become immortal. I want to become immortal. I want to live forever. Brahmaji says, you know you cannot become immortal. You know that. And he says, okay, grant me this. Grant me a life where nobody can kill me, be it man or an animal, be it night or day, be it inside or outside be it by any weapon or any of your creations, none of this should be able to kill me. And Brahmaji said, well, because you've done tapas, that has to, then fine. You can't be killed by these circumstances that you gave me. And so Hiranyakashipu was thrilled. He was so, so thrilled that he even took the place of Indra in Indra Loka. And he gained so much power because he was this 
person who was undefeated. And he did not like Lord Vishnu because Lord Vishnu in the Varaha Avatara, he vanquished his brother Hiranyaksha. So he said, whoever worships Lord Vishnu, I don't want to know of them. Get rid of all the Brahmanas, all those who are practicing rituals, all those who are doing good deeds. He said, I don't want any of them here. And this was this Hiranyakashipu's attitude. And so many, many people suffered. And Brahmaji said, don't worry, something will happen. So this Hiranyakashipu had four children. And one of his sons was called Prahlad. Prahlada means Prakarshena Ahlad, the one who is the delight to everyone. And this Prahlad was very unique. It was very unique because the time when Hiranyakashipu did austerity, what happened was the Devatas started to take away all their, started to regain all their things from the Asuras. And so at that time, Indra wanted to kidnap, uh, you know, the Devatas, uh, the Asura's wives. So Hiranyakashipu's wife, Kayadu, was going to be kidnapped by Indra. But Naraji said, no, 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 keep the wife with me because I know who's in the womb. And so what happened was when Prahlad was in the womb of Kayadu, Narada kept giving him teachings, kept giving him all the teachings about Narayana. So Prenatal education is what Prahlada had in Kayadu's womb. And so when he was born, he was born with the samskara of Narayana, Narayana, Narayana of Bhagavan Vishnu. He was born with this samskara because this is what he heard in his mother's womb. Anything that the children hear in their mom's womb, anything that they hear, anything that they listen to, they wake up with that samskara. And so when Prahlad emerged from the womb, this is all he had in his heart. And so Hiranyak, Hiranyakashipu took Prahlad, kept him in his lap, and he said, now I'm going to send you to Gurukula. Now when Prahlad was about five years old, he said, I'm going to send you to Gurukula. So he sends Prahlad to Gurukula. But every now and then, Prahlad comes home to visit. And then Hiranyakashipu loves Prahlad so much. And he always puts him in his lap and he says, tell me, what did you learn? And Prahlad opens his mouth and he says, this is what I learned. He said, for all embodied souls whose mind is ever disturbed with the false idea of I and mine, Having abandoned one's home, which degrades one's soul and is just like a well whose mouth is hidden, one should go to the woods and take refuge in Sri Hari. This is a child. This is what he's saying. He's saying that the biggest delusion is the words I and mine. The biggest delusion is the word I and mine. And all children, because he was in, you know, he children at that age went to Gurukula. All children leaving their homes should abandon this thought of I and mine and should go to the feet of Sri Hari. This Hiranyakashipu was so upset at Prahlad, at Prahlad's education. He said, what's going on? And again, he sends Prahlad. He says, I think you, you, you're not learning correctly. You're not learning correctly. Go and come back and let's see what you learn. And so Prahlad goes back to Gurukula. And the next time, Hiranyakashipu puts Prahlad on his lap and says, tell me what you learned in Gurukula. Tell me, what did you learn? Prahlad says, Shravanam kirtanam deshno smaranam padasevanam archanam vandanam dasyam this is what we call the nine forms of devotion or the nine forms of bhakti. He said, I learned to listen to Lord Vishnu, Shravanam. 
Kirtanam. I learn to sing the glory of Lord Vishnu. Smaranam. I learn to only remember Lord Vishnu. Pada Sevanam. I learn to only worship the feet of Lord Vishnu. Archanam. I learn to only worship, do puja to Lord Vishnu. Vandanam. I learn to respect and praise Lord Vishnu. Dasyam. I learn to be a servant to Lord Vishnu. Sakya, I learn to be a friend of Lord Vishnu. Atmani Vedana, I learn to give myself to Lord Vishnu. And this Hiranyaka Shipu said, this is too much. This is ridiculous. How can you praise this Lord Vishnu who killed my brother Hiranyaksha? And he was so incredibly upset by this. He said, Prahlad, you have to be killed. You have to be killed because you're praising my enemy. You're praising Vishnu. You're talking about remembering him, singing his glories, praising him. You have to be killed. And so this Hiranyakashipu, who was the father, he commits all sorts of atrocities to Prahlada. And it is said, I'll read you some of the things that he did. He puts him in caves. He tries to give him poison. He starves him. He exposes him to frost, to winds, to fire, to floods. He tries to get him crushed by elephants. And he tries to do all kinds of things to destroy Prahlad. But Prahlad is indestructible. Every time he tries to destroy Prahlad, Bhagavan Vishnu comes in one form and the other and tries to save him. Finally, he decides that he has his sister Holika. And Holika has a boon that she cannot be burnt by fire. I told you these Rakshasas, they have all kinds of boons. And her boon was that she cannot be burnt by fire. So they construct this huge fire. And Holika takes Prahlad and puts Prahlad on her lap. Knowing that she can't be burned by fire, so Hiranyakashipu says, you go in fire and you hold him there. You hold him there so that he is able to stay in that fire and not go anywhere. And this big, huge fire is created. And in this fire, what happens is Holika ends up being burnt. But Prahlad emerges unburnt and untouched. And an Hiranyakashipu is just so distraught by this. And this whole event is why we celebrate, or one of the reasons why we celebrate Holi. This, this burning of Holika is called Holika Dahan. Holika Dahan. And this Holika Dahan means it doesn't symbolize Holika per se. It symbolizes the negativities of a seeker. When a seeker is always having negativities that are deep in their hearts, anything that they want to get rid of, anything that is blocking them, blocking them from pursuing the spiritual path, anything that makes them or blocks them, that is called the negativity. So what is something negative? You know, these terms, positive, negative, positive, negative. How do you know what's positive, negative? Negative means it's blocking me from realizing who I am. It's blocking me from my pursuit of truth in the spiritual path. That is called negativity. And holy resembles the burning of that negativity. And the burning of that negativity only happens or can happen with devotion. Prahlad symbolizes devotion. Whenever we have negativities and we list them all out, sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's procrastination, sometimes it's tardiness, sometimes it's indiscipline. And when we're dealing with our negativities, so many times, so many books will say, deal with this, deal with anger this way, deal with procrastination this way, 
deal with laziness this way, deal with indiscipline this way. And what ends up happening is we have so many ways to deal with so many things that we're so just we're like, how do you do it? How do you do all of this? If I want to clean myself up, why don't you just give me one way? Don't give me so many ways. Just give me one way. That one way is the way of devotion to God, devotion to Guru. That's what Prahlad symbolizes. That every single negativity that we have inside of us, just that one seed of devotion, all of it vanishes. That's what holy symbolizes. And that is why we celebrate that glory of devotion. The burning of our negativities through holika dahan. That means holika dahan. Don't think of a male or a female. Think of the negativities in us. And that is through the colors of devotion. Why we have so many colors in holy? It's because navada bhakti. What I read to you, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, right? So Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. These nine forms of devotion are the nine, the colors, the different, different colors that fill the air. That's what holy is about. 